People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Now, we'll get into the issue of familial hypercholesterolemia. These people can have an LDL of 180 or above, whether they're on a statin or not. If you have an LDL of 180 or above, you need to be thinking about the potential for familial hypercholesterolemia. In other words, a genetic thing that happens in about somewhere between 1 in 200 and 1 in 500 families. Now, let's say you've got an LDL and there is risk associated with those families. Not nearly as much risk as you might think. Almost everybody's still too focused on LDL. They think that's a real big risk. Given what I do, I've got plenty of patients with FH, familial hypercholesterolemia. I can tell you those folks with FH tend to do fine until they get into their 50s and 60s and they start having problems. Why is that? Because they start developing insulin resistance, diabetes, prediabetes, and that's what takes them out. There is a multifactorial component to cardiovascular disease. In other words, things pile up, risk factors. So usually you can do fine with your garden variety FH with LDL of 200, 250. Now, homozygous FH is a very, very different component. These people have a LDLs, 350, 400, those people can die as teenagers. So don't tell me that increased LDL alone is never a problem. That's not true. But it's not nearly the problem that most people think, the vast majority of the medical community. So if there are 200 families that has FH, then there's going to be probably 10 people watching this video that has FH. What do you do? Your LDL is 210. Do you panic? No. You do what most of the rest of us should be doing. And then first look to see what your insulin sensitivity is, whether you have prediabetes. The other thing to think about is you may not have that, or that may not be the major reason why you have an elevated LDL. Your elevated LDL might might be coming from lean mass hyperresponders. And by the way, some of those lean mass hyperresponders can get up into the 300s on LDL. If you've not heard of lean mass hyperresponder, take a look at our video with Dave Feldman and plenty of our other videos. Just do a YouTube search for PrevMed Ford Brewer lean mass hyperresponder. Familial hypercholesterolemia, increased LDL and APOB and cardiovascular risk. So that's what we just covered. Now they get into a, a different topic, LP little a. Not to be confused with LPPLA2. I had another patient just yesterday who kept going back and forth between LP little a and LPPLA2. LPPLA2 is one of those two enzymes that the body uses to attack plaque. It's a test in the cardiovascular inflammation panel. LP little a is something entirely different. In fact, it's a genetic variation of ApoB. Our panel, one of the things that we look for, is, there's three things. The three Apo lipoproteins. One is ApoA1. Remember we said in the beginning that that forms HDL. The second one is ApoB. We said that forms LDL, IDL, intermediate density lipoproteins, VLDL, very low density lipoproteins, and chylomicrons. LP little a is the third apolipoprotein that we talk about. And that one is basically a genetic variation of ApoB. Now, when you say genetic variation, it sounds like that implies by common logic that either you have it or you don't. The genetic variation appears to be how often we use it. So with some people, and we've had plenty of them on the show, Joe, for example, had an LP little a up in like seven and eight hundreds. We've had several people talk about their LP little a problem. In fact, most doctors won't tell you about it. They won't test for it. They don't know about it because... Doctors have a perception that you can't do anything about it. For example, the head of cardiology for Mayo Clinic, maybe 10 years ago, said, what do you give for LP little a? Well, you give a statin. Does a statin decrease LP little a? Maybe not. But what you're wanting to do is manage all the other risks since you can't manage LP little a. Well, that's certainly not exciting or helpful for those of us who have significant LP little a. As you can imagine, with a global practice in cardiovascular prevention, I've got a lot of people with LP little a. And with some background in genetics, you might guess some other things as well. And sure enough, there is a group, a French-Canadian gene pool, 
in which LP little a is very, very high. When you have those problems, you start getting in the seven or eight hundreds, you start getting calcification of the aortic valve. But what most people will say is, oh, once you get over 40 or even 30 for the LP little a, depending on the, the units you're looking at, you're getting at risk. I can tell you that's not the case. 40s and 30s are just not significant risk. Again, much, three times that is still not significant risk. 10 times that you're starting to get into some significant risks. The use of LP little a is a genetic variation of the ApoB. And like ApoB, many of us would say it's not the arsonist, it's the fireman. The question behind starting statins or other drugs to decrease cardiovascular risk, I don't recommend statins based on LDL level alone. And I've shared that many times. I recommend a statin because I don't recommend statins to decrease LDL. That's what most doctors think. It's, you know, sort of a single synapse thing, meaning there's no thought process between seeing high LDL and prescribing an, a, a statin. Even the standards committees for the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology, they're starting to rethink this slowly and it's going to take forever because guess what? They're a standards committee and they have their internal human ego issues to deal with and political issues to deal with. But even the ACC and the AHA are beginning to say you need to think through this more deeply. For example, back in 2018, no matter what your LDL level is, if you have a zero calcium score, you don't need a statin. I, I don't agree with that. Either. I would say that that's not correct. I covered a video where we showed that there are times when you may have a completely zero calcium score, but you have plaque and that plaque is completely soft. Therefore, you have cardiovascular risk. And sure enough, people with a zero calcium score may have a little bit of risk. Therefore, you can't just depend on calcium score alone. So thank you for hanging in there with me.